everybody. I'm back. I'm Brian. This is Shamrock and Records. And this is about a week and a half late. <laughs> I'm going to show you my record store day purchases. Um, I tried making a video a couple days ago. My phone said it didn't have enough storage to upload. And I scrapped it. So I'm making a new one. And uh, let's see. Today's May 1st. So uh, yeah, we're almost two weeks after record store day. But I kind of figured you guys might want to see what I picked up. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's you know nine o'clock in the morning right now, so I have my coffee. I got the Stand by Me soundtrack going on, which just awesome. Uh, great movie, great music. But uh, let's get into the uh, meat and the potatoes here. First off, I think in my last video I talked about how Jonathan, the cheap and cheerful record collector, and myself were gonna go see Steve Earle for the Copperhead Road Tour. So uh, we had a great time, and at that show, I picked up his new record, um, So You Wanna Be an Outlaw. I always forget the name of it. <laughs> and uh, if you can see closely, uh, Steve uh, signed it for me after the show is really cool um, on the tour he's been you know uh, going out after he's not announcing that he's gonna come out and do a signing but about 15 20 minutes after the show um, he's been coming out and uh, signing things and taking pictures so uh, Jonathan and I uh, had our picture taken with him I, you know what I love when uh, when they put the lyrics. That is my favorite thing about a record. The label's really cool. It's on the, like that original, like that, like 70s green um, Warner Brothers label, which I thought was pretty awesome. It's a really good record. It was a really great show. Uh, Jonathan and I had a great time. We were like 11th row, and uh, you know, he, he did all of Copperhead Road. And then uh, he did some of his other hits at the end, you know, um, Galway Girl, and uh, he did a cover of Hey Joe, and uh, you know, the, the place was, it was such a good show. Uh, anyway, uh, on to Record Store Day. <laughs> but before I start showing you guys, uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to everybody out there that's been um, leaving comments and uh, hitting the like button and subscribing and um, I just wanted to apologize for not um, writing back on comments from one of my last videos uh, the 777 uh, video the one with my daughter if you saw it um, I, I was just wicked busy I haven't had time to uh, write comments I have read everything so I appreciate all the kind words uh, and my daughter was very excited to see all the happy birthday messages. Uh, she was like, oh my god, I'm world famous! <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, Madison, he's from Australia! And this, you know, like, it, so like, she was very excited about that. So, uh, you know, it, it really made her day uh, seeing those comments come in. So, thank you guys and gals. Of the vinyl community. Uh, anyway, um, my record store day releases <laughs> or purchases, whatever. Um, there was two essential records that I really wanted, and as you guys know, I'm a huge Van Morrison fan, so I needed um, the alternative Moon Dance, and I know uh, several of you guys have shown this already. Um, so I'm not going to mention everybody that I've seen that has shown it, uh, but I do want to kind of. Uh, Tell everybody, because every uh, the videos that I've seen, the people that are kind of showing it, they're saying it's the same moon dance, but it's really not. Um, instead of the song "Every Day," there's a song called "I Shall Sing," which is not on Moon Dance. Uh, that track right there on the original Moon Dance would be "Every Day," so it does have a different song. Uh, just for any of you guys that did not purchase this and are kind of on the fence about picking it up. That song, I Shall Sing, mind-blowing, all right? Uh, lots of horns, it's very upbeat, it's something you're gonna wanna dance to. It's very summery, 
Uh, so anybody that does like uh, like summer music and makes like summer mixes, I know for me, I like to make um, different kinds of playlists for different seasons. And uh, my summer playlist is always my favorite. Um, it's just upbeat, it's happy, it's fun. And um, that's the kind of song that I would want on my summer playlist. So the alternative, Moon Dance, um, did not let me down. This sounds great, and um, the different the different takes on the tracks are phenomenal. So uh, you know, Moon Dance, the the actual song Moon Dance is done in like a minor key. Um, it's just really cool. Oh man, it's it's so different. So uh, and, and then it kind of goes off. It's a uh, like a longer instrumental um, part in that song. I don't, it, very cool. Check it out. And the cool thing about that record store day release is that it was not even twenty bucks. I think it was like nineteen dollars. So um, I know all the record store day haters complain about the prices, but um, I don't think that these the things that I picked up weren't expensive so uh, this next one was the other big release that I wanted and um, price wise I think this was only $14 um, and it's uh, Jason Isbell and the 400 unit and this is uh, this was recorded live at Twist and Shout um, on November 16th of 2007 now my I've been really digging Jason Isbell lately. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, singer-songwriter, very similar to like a Ryan Adams. He used to be in the Drive-By Truckers. Um, myself, not a Drive-By Truckers fan. Uh, so I always kind of put Isbell way on the back burner. And then I started hearing some of his things and I've been blown away by him. So I may have to go back and get his stuff with the Truckers. But uh, this was on his old label, New West. And Jason did not want this to get made for Record Store Day. He actually, uh, there was an article in Rolling Stone magazine about how he did not want anybody to buy this because um, they, they pressed it without his permission. But, you know, it was on his own label, so he really couldn't do anything about it. Um, Sorry, Jason Isbell, I wanted it. <laughs> because uh, he covers Van Morrison's Into the Mystic. And uh, that is my most favorite song of all time. And um, I needed that. So uh, I'm a big Isbell fan. So I just picked up tickets to go see him um, for July. He's going to be playing up here in Portland with uh, Brandy Carlisle. So uh, two of my favorite artists. Um, so can't wait for that. Um, next one I picked up is something that um, Ben Queller, Shasha, someone I've been a fan of uh, since before this was released. And I mean, this came out in 2002 originally. And um, I actually saw him um, play before he was signed to a label. Now, he was signed to ATO Records and put this out. Uh, he also had a I believe his EP, he had a, like a four or five song EP that came out prior to this. I had that CD. Um, but I saw him before he even had anything uh, recorded. Um, he was opening up for Howie Day at a small little college in New York. And Ben came out looking like, you know, had like a little, I don't know, like a, a young Bob Dylan. He came out kind of scruffy looking, and he had a harmonica, and uh, his acoustic guitar, and he came out and did a bunch of covers. He, I remember he covered uh, the Sweater Song by Weezer. He covered uh, Vanilla Ice's Ice Ice Baby on acoustic guitar. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this kid's cool. <laughs> and uh, he ended up getting signed to ATL Records, which, was, uh, which is Dave Matthews' label. Dave started that label, and if I remember correctly, um, Ben Queller could have been the very first person signed to that label. Um, it was either Ben Queller or David Gray, I believe. So I'll have to check that out, or if you guys know. 
but I believe Ben Queller and David Gray were like two of the very first artists um, signed to ATO Records. Uh, just a little tidbit. Uh, but uh, it sounds great. Um, it's something, it's, it's just very catchy, uh, poppy, uh, alternate. It has a kind of like a Weezer, kind of blue kind of sound, uh, kind of power pop, uh, alternative. Uh, just very catchy again um, for for summer music. Uh, I think I'm in the summer vibe right now because the sun is finally starting to shine here. We're going to be in the 80s in Maine tomorrow, and uh, I'm just like in the summer vibe. So <laughs> um, the next one I picked up is something that I really uh, really kind of needed, um, and it's Tom Waits Ballers. Um, all three. Of the records from the Orphans um, package came out Ballers, Brawlers, and Bastards. I did not pick up the other two. Um, I am a sappy Tom Waits fan. Uh, I love his early stuff. I love Closing Time, The Heart of Saturday Night, all that early singer songwriter. Um, piano ballad kind of stuff is where I'm at for uh, Tom. This one did come on a really pretty, uh, like a like a dark royal blue um, vinyl. Just It's very pretty. Uh, but uh, this is getting released later this month on black vinyl. So if anybody missed this on Record Store Day, uh, it's coming out soon. I believe it's coming out in like two more weeks. Um, and it's going to be cheaper. <laughs> and it's going to be on black vinyl. And it's probably going to sound just as good as this. So uh, I would highly recommend it. Um, I love Ballers because, like I said, it is the sappy stuff. It's the ballads. It's uh, very Celtic sounding. Some of the songs, uh, there's some like lullabies. And it uh, it's just a very soothing Tom Waits and he does a version of Goodnight Irene on this record, which is a very sentimental song to me, because uh, Irene is my mother, my mother's mother, so my grandmother on my mom's side, who I'd never met. Um, she had passed away uh, when my mom was a baby, a very little girl uh, from leukemia. So uh, Goodnight Irene has always been a... Uh, a staple in my house um, so it's a sentimental song and to have Tom Waits doing that track is uh, really important and special for me um, the next one I picked up um, I was kind of hesitant but it was something I really kind of wanted uh, and I, I'm gonna say I was hesitant because it's not something that I typically buy um, but it's Tank and the Bangas and this is a newer hip-hop uh, soul um, artist. They were the winner of the 2017 NPR Tiny Desk uh, concert series. And um, I believe this is one of... I think they may have one other thing on vinyl. Um, but this could be their very first um, vinyl release. I think it's their second vinyl release. Um, I think I found one other thing that was pressed on vinyl. But this is really cool hip-hop. Um, very jazzy, soulful kind of stuff. If you guys kind of remember like Arrested Development, kind of that vibe. Uh, it's really cool orange vinyl. Um, I'm not really sure how many they pressed of this. I don't believe there was too many. Uh, I couldn't find any information on how many were pressed. But, um, it's really cool. There's, uh, you know, it's like a live band, uh, female, um, singer and, um, rapper, I guess. Um, but, um, like I said, it's very soulful. There's horns, uh, like really like dreamy piano playing. Um, I'd highly recommend just going online and checking out Tank and the Bangas. Uh, check out the contest. Check out the Tiny Desk co contest uh, from NPR from last year. It's really cool. It's worth your while if you're into, you know, like old school 90s hip hop. Um, I don't really show much hip hop on here because I don't own a lot, 
but um, I'm a huge fan of like a tribe called Quest. I like De La Soul, Diggable Planets, um, Das Effects, um, you know that uh, all that kind of old school, you know, Arrested Development, which I had already mentioned. But if you like that kind of stuff, it's very like organic, uh, intellectual. Um, that's the kind of you know hip hop that I enjoy. So. Um, after we left Bull Moose, um, Jonathan, the cheap and cheerful record collector, myself, and my friend Mike that come uh, up to Maine from Boston, um, we had to go to another Bull Moose because my buddy couldn't find one of the records he wanted. As we go over there, we find out that um, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, there's going to be, they might be giants playing at Bull Moose. Um, but it was sold out. <laughs> there was only like 250 tickets. And um, luckily, <laughs> I bumped into a friend that works there. And he hooked me up. And he got me three free tickets to get into the show. So later on, uh, I, I showed uh, Jonathan and Mike. Uh, I was like, hey guys, I got free tickets. <laughs> so <laughs> they were really excited. Um, we got to uh, go see They Might Be Giants. And the very cool thing is after we left Bull Moose, we uh, went into downtown Portland, hit some of the other record shops, and what do I find there was an original copy of Flood by They Might Be Giants. So as you can see, I had the band sign it um, at the show, which was really cool. They did like seven tracks. They did, uh, they did quite a bit off of this. They did like three or four off of this one. Um, which, you know, they did like Birdhouse of Your Soul. They did uh, Istanbul, not Constantinople. Uh, what, um, what else did they do? Um, oh, God, I don't remember. But uh, Women and Men. But, uh, and then they did some stuff off their new record. Great, great, great show. I uh, I had never seen They Might Be Giants before, so I was pretty excited. Um, I want to go change, put some music on. Hold on. All right. No music was killing me. I needed more music. So, um, as we were in Portland, we had, uh, I think we had six shops total for the day between Bull Moose and the other, like, vintage, uh, shops. Uh, and I found a copy of the Sonics, which I didn't have any Sonics on vinyl. Uh, I have a, like, a Greatest Hits compilation CD, and, uh, that was pretty much all I've owned of the Sonics. And, um... It's something I've been looking for for a long time. I just never ever see the Sonics on vinyl. Um, you know, this is a, a reissue, as you can tell by the cheesy cover. But uh, I, I needed it. The, the The pressing's not the greatest. It's uh, it's not like a very loud pressing, but uh, it's a cool looking label. I mean, it's it's in great shape, so it's it's not like popping or skipping or anything it's beautiful um there's not like one blemish on here but overall i thought the the pressing didn't sound the greatest but i kind of expected that from a reissue but um it's cool to have them on vinyl um another one i was very very excited about was this otis redding love man um I own, I love Otis. <laughs> I don't think you guys know how much I enjoy Otis Redding. Um, I just absolutely love Otis. One of my favorite singers. And I can never find any Otis on vinyl. And this is on the yellow Echo label. Uh, I have a bunch of his compilations. But, uh, yeah, somebody wrote their name on there, but who cares? Um, but I, I, I don't have any, this is my first like actual record. That's not a compilation. So I was thrilled to finally find some Otis that was in playable condition. Because I do see his stuff. It's either over, way, 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 way overpriced. Just I can't afford it. Or uh, it's beat to shit. <laughs> so I was finally ecstatic to pick that one up. And it was only like 14 bucks. So I was, that's in my range. And the very last record I picked up for Record Store Day of 2018 uh, is very ecstatic to find this also because it's another artist I've been looking for on vinyl. 
And this is an original Towns Van Zant flying shoes. Oh. And it's also a gold stamp promo. Um, this is on the uh, tomato label. And it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous cup. There is not one mark on this. Uh, the only semi issue with it is it looks like it had a little bit of like a water stain right there but but the rest of it is like beautiful so uh flying shoes towns van zant very ecstatic to get that um oh my let me just show you the pain i've been sitting through so i'm sitting on a chair in front of my stuff here right it, it, but I got my legs spread open because <laughs> I got a, a stack of records between my... I'm going to show you this. So, I got this pile of records here. Alright? I got stacks of records just all over the place right now. Um, I don't know, hopefully you can kind of see all that, right? And then over here, I got more stacks of stuff. Alright? And uh, if I'm doing this justice or not, but basically, I wanted to show you guys and gals this because I've picked up like two or three collections in the last like month or so. All right, I'm starting to pick up a little bit of collections, smaller collections, you know, um, picking things out, um, finding upgrades. And just getting rid of the rest, you know, whether it's trading or selling them off or whatever. But I just, I really want to revamp my collection, make this even better. And uh, yeah, so I got records all over the place, but I, I've kind of showed that you guys this because I'm planning on doing a, uh, a highlights uh, video, maybe in another week or two. Of after it's really gone through and um, you know it's probably about five six hundred records I've picked up over the last month and I want to show you guys all of my highlights from uh, these pickups so uh, be looking out for that thank you again new subscribers old subscribers friends uh, people that comment people that don't comment uh, thank you guys for watching and uh, cheers <laughs>